Hi, Rapsy, with your financial market wrap-up. And this wrap-up, I am late. It is 7.30 p.m. Central Time on this Wednesday evening, the 16th of March. Folks, a wild trading day. I'm still rocking and reeling, doing my chart work. Remember, I run a brokerage firm at the same time. So I got to deal with the events that take place there, questions that come up through the brokers. To me, most of the clients deal with our brokers. They don't have to, at least I'm not bombarded with the calls all day. And my brokers do a pretty good job of shielding me so I can do what they want me to do, research, marketing, so on and so forth. What a day. The Fed came out and the event is over. Now you're going to say, what does that mean the event is over? It's over. This is the first rate hike since 2018. The dot plot shows that we're going to get rate hikes at every live meeting well into 2023. The Fed chair told us that they're going to run off the balance sheet, and that can be a powerful tool. He didn't yet give us the date, but it's certainly up to being live at every meeting. So I would expect that the next meeting, we're going to hear words uh, of it. I don't know that they'll do it then. They generally give you the wording of what they're going to do and when it's going to take place. So it would surprise me that it's the next meeting, but they can tell us that then it's going to begin. And they claim that'll be another powerful tool. The Fed thinks that the uh, economy is strong enough to withstand higher interest rates, a series of them to drive the market up. When asked the question about it, you do realize you have to go up dramatically in order to reach the current inflation. I think the Fed is too rosy on the idea that inflation is going to go back down anytime soon to 4%. I think they'll be lucky if it gets a low to mid-5 in it. How's that uh, at the end of the year? I, I think that you're stuck with this right now. But again, things change very fast, and they have 400 you know, economists working. I'm a little guy here. But that's what I happen to think. And I'm not convinced they'll do all the interest rate hikes that they have on there because I don't think the economy will withstand it. I think they're wrong. I think that trying to put on another two percentage points on rates will stop the employment, the strong employment that you have. It will shut businesses down and cause a recession. But the beauty is they're willing to do the dance. In other words, they'll do what they have to do and back off as soon as they have to. Those are the good things. And how did the market greet it? Well, the market's greeting it in the stock market with a continuation of a big rally that began the other day. Do you remember me telling you I think a trading bottom is in place? Now, there's a difference between a bottom is a trend bottom and a trading bottom. On February 24th, we went down in most of the stock indices and have not gone back down to challenge that specific low. Are you aware that on March 8th, March 8th, what's today, the 16th? You were talking Brent crude, $30, $33, $34 higher than it is right now? March 8th. Where were the wheat prices at that point in time? March, you know, just go back a week. So what the Fed is sort of saying, and I, then we'll get into the charts, is that the Ukrainian war event has happened and the market seems to have adjusted to it. Now the market is saying, I think in another statement, the Fed event has happened and the market's adjusted to it. Yes, there'll be tweaks back and forth, but this is what I think is going on as a chartist and a guy that has been this, 53 years of being through this. So here's the S&P and here's the bounce. You can see on a weekly chart, you went down last week to a low of 413, 4138.75, closed at 4201, and you've not come back down on a weekly basis to challenge that. What about on the daily? This is the 24th. You came down, but you didn't come down to the 4100 level, and now you're picking up again. Okay, are we trending? You're not. That's the beauty of swing lines. The swing lines look at five events to draw, be it to the top or the bottom. In that way, you're not saying on this chart, oh, well, I see that it's a double bottom, the market's going up. Nonsense. That's great for you to say. But on a quantitative basis, which is very different, got a lower and low, higher high. That is not a trend. Where's the resistance? Well, you went through the first resistance point like it didn't exist. This is where it has been. The market has paid attention to that. You went through that and closed over it today. Okay, tomorrow's the important day. Does it slide back to test it? If it stays above it, well, 
then one of the other areas you might be going is to the 200-day average, which is a big resistance point at 44, 44, 75. Where's the Bollinger Band? Well, I'll be a son of a gun. The two are together. So I contend that the real powerful resistance begins at 43.55 right up to that 200-day average, and that whatever system pros are working with, they should take that into account and probably be bailing if they're long against that number. What about momentum? It is up. So I've got the momentum up. I have the bias up. I don't have a trend because I have a higher high and lower low on the chart. And I see a lot of resistance from 43.56 to the 200-day average at 44.22. What about the NASDAQ? It did the same thing. This is the first time in a very long time that you've been able to get up and over the 18-day uh, average of closes. Now, the difference on this chart, and I'm going to take you back here, is this market went down on the 24th to as low as 30.26. And now we just went, take a watch of this. Keep your eye on where we're at. This is March 10th. We dropped back down to, uh, to uh, 129.41.75 and turn ourselves up. And today you get it. This is a successful double test of that low. I don't think the other chart was. Again, a trading bottom. I'm content with that. Where can it go? Maybe it goes to the upper Bollinger Band, but is it trending? Again, it is not. You got a higher high, lower low. What about the Dow? No, more like the S&P. You did not go back to challenge the February 24th low. You've got the lower low, higher high. You've talked to me a long time. You've watched me for years. Where do you think I think the market's gonna have major resistance? Question and answer. Answer, Ira. 34,197 and a half, the upper Bollinger Band. So from where you're at, I'm not looking for an awful lot more on this upside. We then get to the Russell. It didn't get back to that low. Same pattern. Lower and low, higher high if it rallies, Bollinger Band. In summation, if you get to the Bollinger Bands, I think the pros will dump the long positions they have. In the VIX cash, what's the trend? Whoops, it's down. Where do I think the major support? 2603, what does that tell me? That the uptrend is probably gonna be short-lived. Now what else? The first challenge of a lower Bollinger Band, if you go back and do your work, is a high percentage trade to sell puts. You heard me, looking for prices to get back up to the 18-day average to take money off the table. That's what I think the pros are going to do tomorrow if it hits it. In the T-bond market, what do I tell you? First challenge of a Bollinger being out you go with everything you've got. That's what I think is going to happen. I think the pros are out of this market waiting to sell rallies. Same in the 10-year note. What about the dollar index? Well, the trend is still up, higher lows, but suddenly you have lower highs. So you could fall back to this 18-day average to correct an overbought condition and waffle in there. You may even lose the uptrend. But the market, unless it just picks up and gallops through 99.30, is saying it's having great difficulty holding rallies. In the euro currency, now the question is, can this market rally to the 18-day average for resistance at 111.05, let's call it 111.06. In order to break the downtrend, you have to get through this high of 111.59 and a half. Now, is the market a good short sale? Well, let me give you the problem that I think short sellers are having. Well, you've got the lower highs, you suddenly have higher lows. That is one of these patterns where you narrow in. Very difficult trade. Momentum, the market is trying to work out of being oversold. I still give the nod to the bears, okay? British pound, tomorrow is going to be the day of the uh, Bank of England. Now, did you lose the embedded reading on the close today? Here's today's close. You did not. So, intra-evening and in the morning, you're losing that reading. I don't know if it'll stay lost by the close. If you decided to stay today through the Bank of England report, you got to ride it through to see do you lose it or don't you. If you lose it, out you go on the close. If the market slips back from here, you're probably going back to 128.93. Either way, that's what you're, you're facing. Bitcoin, 
you have a pattern of lower highs and higher lows. That is not a trend. Battleground, pretty clear to me. The 18-day average, looking to see whatever's going to happen. Then we get to the differential between Brent and WTI. It's gone from roughly eight and a quarter to four and a quarter. Unbelievable scope. So during the war, the first phase of it, what did the market do? And I can come back with you uh, right through here, Let's give you an idea of the low point. That was February 17th. It then started picking up in anticipation of the war when the event happened, you know that the stock market crashed on the 24th, we just covered that. This market takes off and puts in the war premium, right? President Biden, oh, I can't get oil. The Saudis aren't helping me. I'm gonna work with the Iranians and Venezuelans. That's all I can say about that. You gotta be crazy to be willing to do either of those events. Turn on America. Get the Keystone pipe well going. Go back to letting our own producers produce and give them a path where it's not just for a short while. They, they, they're not going to invest their money at $100 oil for long-term wells unless you give them a reason to do that. Understand, it's so much easier. Do you honestly think that the Saudis, the Venezuelans, or Iran is doing the air better than we could do it here? <clears throat> Via the uh, Brent oversold as can be. There's a point where I don't want to press it, but you do understand you've gone from nearly, what, the 137 level to 98, almost a $40 break. When's the last time you saw anything like that? You know when that high was? And I just said this. I was looking at it before I did this with you. This is March 7th, nine days ago, days ago, in trading days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days ago. This is the eighth. Can you believe that? One of the biggest, swiftest moves I've ever seen in any commodity, period. Now, don't get me wrong. Nickel went crazy already. We've seen markets go absolutely nuts, but oil's a world commodity. It's a, it's a whole different ball game. What it proves is that stuff in the ground doesn't go away. It's a question of just where's it going to come from and getting crazy when you're scared that it's lost because you're going to lose Russian oil. Come on, it's going to be around the world somewhere. That's the lesson you should have learned. Same thing in WTI. Heating oil, well, if the oil's falling, this is going to fall with it. And right now, the heating oil is not important for heating. Now it's diesel, jet fuel. That's what it's really going to be all about. So you've got to get to that point. And in that gas, you're in an uptrend, higher lows, higher highs until you get back through 450.09, possible target back to the $5 level. But I talk about this each and every morning with you. At about 5.30, I start recording a video and it's ready. I'm posting it already typically before six o'clock. Every now and then it's a little later because I'll oversleep or whatever, <laughs> you know, just how it is, I'm human. I don't just wake up and do the video. I have to read and other things. But I'm going to talk to you longer term trades, weekly trades, swing trades. Every Saturday, I'm going to cover the weekly charts with the video just for that, for the longer term traders. Then, these videos work on your tablet, your desktop. We're going to give you a free mobile app. It works on your iPhone, your Android phone. It doesn't matter. How do you find out about this? Because it's so easy to get it. Just go to our website under the word research. It's all there for you to take a look at. You'll see how you get it. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day. I will see you all tomorrow.